Math 31, welcome to example six. We're going to find and graph the equation for a function g of x that reflects f of x being 1.25 to the x about the y-axis. And then we're gonna state its domain range and end behavior. All right, so I need to find this equation and graph this equation. And it's this new function g of x. And I basically need to reflect this graph about the y-axis. All right, so taking a look at this, I, I see that's exponential growth. And I say growth, well, I say exponential because the variable's up in the exponent, but I say growth because my base is larger than one. So if I was gonna graph 1.25 to the x, it would look something like that. So let me go ahead and just get my x-axis or my axes labeled and scaled. And I wanna go ahead and graph these functions. So let me go ahead and get my graphing calculator. All right. Here it is. Let's go to our y equals, and I'm gonna type in 1.25 to the x. And let me go to my, well, let me see what it looks like. Just make sure it's exponential growth. All right, so taking a look at that. Yep, it's growing. It's a little slower than the ones we've done before. I think when we were working through most of the examples in this section, our base was two. Um, and you can see 1.25, it's just growing a little bit more slowly. Now. I need to reflect this graph over the y-axis. So every point over here needs to show up over here, right? Every point here will show up here. So I need to take this and reflect it over the y-axis. So I want you to imagine if I had this point right here, right? I'm just pointing to something on my graph. If I wanted to reflect it over the y-axis, I think you'd give me that it would show up right around here. And I'm gonna try and use my eraser to kind of denote that. I don't know if that's the greatest thing to use, but there we go. So this point became this point. So I want you to think about their X and Y coordinates and what they have in common and what, what's different. So think about this point I have with my pencil, this point I have with my eraser. All right, so here's my question. Do they have the same X coordinates? Do they have the same Y coordinates? Is it neither or both? So same x, same y, neither or both. All right, because I wanna reflect this over the y-axis. That was my instruction, right? Reflect this over the y-axis. All right, so here we go. I want you to think about this ordered pair, and I'm gonna kind of fake this. This looks like it's at the ordered pair one, two, three, four. It's about four, three. I, I know it's not exactly that, but I want you to imagine four, three, right? And I wanna reflect it over here. So you hear how I went right and then up? But to get to this point here, I went left and then up. So you heard me go in opposite directions, right versus left, and that affects your x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate of the pencil point is different than the x-coordinate of the eraser point. But I think you also heard on both of them I headed up. They have the same y value, but they have opposite x values. So when you reflect points or graphs over the y-axis, the x-coordinate changes, but the y-coordinate stays the same. So keeping that in mind that all of my x-coordinates change and they literally go from positive to negative here or negative to positive here. So my x-coordinates get the opposite sign, but the y-coordinates stay the same. Well, let's go to our table and see how that plays out. So I'm gonna scroll down a bit till I find some reasonable numbers. All right, so I'll start in on here. I see the ordered pair negative 1.8. So on my original graph, I'd be at negative 1.8. When I reflect that over the y-axis, I'll be at positive 1.8. Here I was at 0, 1. Well, 0, 1 will reflect to itself. All right, here I was at 1 and about 1.25. So I was at 1, 1.25. It's gonna reflect to negative 1, 1.25. This one's gonna to reflect to negative two, 1.5. I'm gonna head up a little, get some better numbers. Um, let me try seven, 4.7, that's gonna to go to negative seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I keep the Y coordinate, one, two, three, 4.76. And let me get something even a little larger. I'll go negative 11 and then 11.6, just so I can start to see this function. All right, so let's go ahead and fill this in. Okay, so you saw me trying to graph this and then I missed most of the dots. 
Whenever that happens, just make your dots bigger. Nobody will ever know. Looking awesome. Okay, great. And there's that exponential function. At least that's the graph of my exponential function. All right, so I'm happy with my graph so far, but I was also asked to find the equation. So let me go find this equation, g of x. All right, if you remember from back in section 3.5, when we reflected functions about the y-axis, it changed this x letter here. So anytime you reflect over the y-axis, you're gonna change the sign on your x variable. So this will become 1.25 to the negative x because all of our x coordinates were having the opposite signs, right? We said if they were positive x values, they became negative. If they were negative x values, they became positive. So we were swapping out, or I should say changing the sign of those x coordinates. And here's my function. I can see my horizontal asymptote, so let me go graph that, put that in. horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. Great. All right, so let's start to talk about domain range and my end behavior. Um, I, I wanna just deconstruct this a little bit. In case you're thinking, well, this could be a fraction because I have a negative exponent. It could, but let me show you what's going on here. I can unscramble this and I, I could say this is 1.25 to the negative one and then all of that raised to the x power and just go with me for a moment when you have a power raised to a power you would multiply the exponents and negative one times positive x is negative x so these two are equivalent all right but then I want us to think about how I could apply the negative one exponent to just 1.25 I could say this was 1 over 1.25 and then all of that raised to the x power. And when I check out what one over 1.25 is on my calculator, I'm gonna find out it's the decimal point eight. So this function could also be written as point eight to the x. And, and what shows up better in this version of the function as compared to this one is I can now see its exponential decay because it's still an exponential function but my base is a fraction between zero and one. So, okay, great, exponential decay. But at the end of it, for domain issues, I've got no fractions, all right? Or actually, if you wanna be super technical, you might be saying, yes, Miss A, you still have a fraction. This is four-fifths to the x. Okay, I'll give you that, but this denominator never zeroes out. So I am not picking up any domain issues from this. So I've got no fractions, no radicals, no logarithms negative infinity to infinity. All right, the range, I can see it goes from my horizontal asymptote of zero up to positive infinity. For end behavior, I actually have the arrow on the left side, and for exponential decay, that's where your horizontal asymptote will show up on the right side. Okay. All right, so before we get out of this, I just wanna kind of summarize all these transformations that we've done. So if you have your parent function, b to the x, all right, I can start transforming it. So I can translate this. I could multiply a constant out in front of the exponential expression. I could add or subtract a constant up in your exponent, or I could add and subtract a constant outside of your exponential expression. All right, so when we start with b to the x, where b is greater than one, or I should say greater than zero, sorry, this should technically be greater than zero. There we go, greater than zero, sorry about that. Um, you're gonna shift horizontally C units to the right. And again, if C, if this was X plus three, C would technically be negative three. So you're shifting negative three units right, or really three units left, but that C will shift you left or right. You're gonna stretch vertically by this A factor, as long as it's larger than one in absolute value. All right, you're gonna get compressed if A is a fraction between zero and one. You're gonna shift vertically d units. And then when a itself is negative, that's when you're gonna reflect over the x-axis. All right, and the order of the shifts, transformations, and reflections follows the orders of operations. 
All right, so with that, I'm gonna flip over to my computer and we're gonna take a look at this last example with our calculator. All right, I'll see you in a bit, gang, bye.